distinguished guests, community members, staff, students, and of course, our honored veterans. Good morning, and welcome to this Veterans Day celebration. Armistice Day was first created to honor the men and women who fought in World War I. Congress later declared that Armistice Day would be changed to Veterans Day to honor all of the men and women who fought in battles to preserve the rights and freedoms of the American people. Today, we will take part in a ceremony that engages in customs that signify and symbolize the rights we have as Americans. Please, exercise your rights in a manner that does not infringe upon the rights of others and live the life that our veterans and the Constitution ensures. It is my pleasure this morning to introduce to you Mr. Lane Bush, who will be our Master of Ceremonies. He is retri retired Chief Warrant Officer, Mr. Lane Bush.
James McGaffey, pastor of New Life Community Church in Fairfield, will lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, this morning we are indeed a grateful people. Grateful for the awesome privilege that is ours to be able to live in this land of freedom. We thank you, Lord, for the men and women down through the years who have sacrificed and given their lives to establish freedom in this land and to maintain that freedom in this land. We thank you, Father, for those who not only have given of their lives, but those who are still with us, that we are privileged to honor today, together with those who have passed on in battle. We also thank you, Father, for the fact that you are with the 224th as they prepare to go on to their later assignment. We ask that you would just give them strength and give them guidance and lead them. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege we have of upholding them. And we pray that you'll continue to guide us and bless us in this celebration here this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
50 years, American Legion Post 47 has sponsored Fairfield High School students to attend Hawkeye Boys State at Camp Dodge. Boys State is a great program that allows student leaders to experience the workings of government at state and local levels. The students who attended this past year are seniors Cliff Newman and Nathan McCurran. This year, both of the young men will honor us with a presentation. Cliff Newman is the son of Arthur and Lisa Newman. Cliff enjoys reading, music, speech, and drama in high school. He is active in his church and scouting, and recently received the coveted Eagle Scout Award. He plans to serve a two-year mission for his church after graduation from high school. Upon his return, he plans to study English at Brigham Young University in Utah. It is my pleasure to introduce Cliff Newman. Nathan McCurran is the son of Deb McCurran and Rick McCurran. 
he, like Cliff, is a busy young man. He is involved in football, tennis, select choir, chamber choir, guys ensemble, student council. He is the vice president of the senior class. He's a member of the Spanish club and still finds time for a part-time job. Nathan plans to attend college at Washington University in St. Louis and major in either political science or pre-law. Help me welcome Nathan Kerr. Lieutenant 
in the 109th Medical Battalion, Iowa Army National Guard in 1998. He served in various leadership positions, including being assigned as the company executive officer of headquarters support company of the 109th Medical Battalion. Captain Messerly was deployed to the Mideast with his unit in January of 2003 and served in, in the vicinity of Baghdad as a part of Operation Iraqi Freedom. As you remember, for the occasion, or for this occasion last year, we had the opportunity to read an inspirational letter that we had received from Captain Messerly. <coughs> Following his return from active duty, he was assigned as commander of Headquarters Support Company and currently is the full time battalion officer in charge of the 109th Medical Battalion in Iowa City. Please welcome Captain Dave Messer. Thank you. You know, I've, uh, when I was teaching here and and we come to these assemblies for the last, well, the five that I went to while I was here. Uh, I often thought about if I ever got the chance to give this kind of a speech and what, what it would be like. And, uh, of course, once I got the chance and I forgot all that, uh, all that I wanted to say. Um, it is an honor to have been asked to speak here. Uh, it's coming home. Uh, Fairfield High School is the greatest place to be from. It's the greatest place to teach in. It's the greatest place to come back to. I have uh, great memories of, of the students that, that I've encountered here, the staff, the friends that I have here. And so it is a pleasure and an honor to be here uh, with you all today. The whole point of today is not to, you know, for me to talk about Iraq and, and uh, the fun that I had there. The whole point here is to thank our veterans for all that they have done for our nation. And I can think of no greater honor than to speak to such a patriotic group of Americans as we have right here today. On this day in history, November 11, 1921, the remains of an unknown soldier were delivered to Arlington National Cemetery, which overlooks our nation's capital. That soldier had been killed while fighting for his country in the trenches of Western Europe. On the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, that soldier was finally laid to rest in his home soil. The Tomb of the Unknown Soldier serves as a reminder to all Americans that the price of freedom has never been free. Those buried beneath the granite stones are a reminder of the tremendous debt this nation owes its veterans. Today on Veterans Day, we pause to honor our veterans past present and future, those who served, those who are serving now, and those who are preparing to serve the nation in the days ahead. Our past warriors served in places like the hedgerows of Normandy, the hilltops of Korea, and the jungles of Vietnam. They distinguished themselves above Berlin and in the dangerous skies of Big Alley. With determination and valor, they devastated the enemy's fleets in the Solomon Slots and at Midway. On the beaches of Guadalcanal and Inchon, they experienced hellish fire to secure a foothold for liberty and democracy. Our present warriors are serving in over 120 nations throughout the world. Today's soldiers serving in the mountainous terrain of Afghanistan burning sands of Iraq. Like those before them, they are facing challenges on a daily basis. And once again, they are displaying both the warrior spirit and the compassion so typical of the American soldier. General Peter Schoomaker, the Army Chief of Staff, has said, our soldiers are world class. They fight valiantly and demonstrate a true warrior spirit. But they also have in their hearts a very compassionate spirit. And we see that demonstrated all around the world. On the playgrounds in Iraq, in the hospitals and orphanages in Afghanistan, and in small villages in Africa. The American soldier is a warrior who offers an extended hand of help and compassion. 
These American veterans, past and present, did not march to foreign shores with notions of glory. Conquest was never their goal. They left their homes and their families and went to distant lands with a simple idea that all peoples in all nations have a right to live in a world free from tyranny. They fought with an equally simple conviction. Some principles in life are worth dying for. Like the unknown soldier at Arlington, soldiers have gone off to war never again to see the country they so bravely, bravely served. In the last century alone, over 425,000 Americans have been killed in combat. Behind each of those deaths lies an American family in mourning. During the Second World War, whole communities paused in silence as a family switched a gold star for a blue star in a window, signifying the loss of a son or a father. Today we collectively mourn for each and every soldier, sailor, airman, and marine killed in combat. The soldiers of our nation's wars have faced serious challenges, but thanks to the ingenuity and technical savvy of the American GI, the vast majority of them did return home. And they went on to do great things for this country. For example, William Feehan was a veteran of the Korean War who in his civilian life exemplified the courage and the spirit of self-sacrifice that he learned in battle. Feehan entered the New York Fire Department in 1959 and rose to the rank of First Commissioner. On the morning of September 11, 2001, Feehan responded to the scene of the World Trade Center in Manhattan. That's right, he was 71 years old. And without a thought for his own safety, he entered the burning buildings to direct the evacuation effort. Tragically, he died along with hundreds of his fellow firefighters. Thousands of New Yorkers are alive today thanks to their willingness to risk everything for a greater good. At any point in American history, one can see the handiwork of veterans doing great things for their country. Soldiers in Washington's army were leaders in the construction of the nation's first transportation system, which included the Erie Canal. Veterans of the Spanish-American War were instrumental in completing the Panama Canal. The GIs of the Second World War greatly expanded the nation's colleges and universities, while other vets participated in the construction of America's superhighway system. Every day in America, veterans are making significant contributions in our communities. Emergency medicine has been enhanced by the experience that skilled surgeons have obtained working in military hospitals located in combat zones. Our airlines are staffed with thousands of pilots who receive their wings on active duty. Our police forces and firefighting units are teaming with veterans who were once MPs or military firefighters. It's not just job skills our veterans bring to our communities. They also bring their commitment, their work ethic, their sense of fair play, and their willingness to act as members of a team. It is these values, the core values of anyone who wears a uniform, that continue to make America great. And from communities across America, the warriors of the future are stepping forward each day to grab the torch of freedom and carry it forward. As with earlier generations, they'll be guided by the core values of the Army, Loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. These new soldiers will be fighting the global war on terrorism. It is a different kind of war that will not be won quickly. It will take patience, <coughs> persistence, and tenacity. I would like to make one final point about honoring veterans. By definition, anyone who served honorably on active duty is a veteran. That includes all those active or reserve who currently wear the uniform. As I speak these words, hundreds of thousands of brave veterans are fighting on the front lines for freedom. 
Altogether, almost 275,000 soldiers are deployed around the world. Of that total, about 37,000 are Army Reserve members, and about 81,000 are National Guard troops currently on active duty supporting various missions, which includes the 224th Engineer Battalion from Fairfield Island. You can find them patrolling the streets and providing medical care in Iraq. You can find these reservists hunting terrorists in the mountains of Afghanistan. Just as earlier generations answered the call of duty, these brave veterans are committed to their mission. They are steadfast in their belief that their country and the entire world will be safer and more prosperous thanks to their efforts. So today, give some thought to the freedoms that you currently enjoy. Those freedoms are costly. They have been and are continually paid for by the sacrifices that our veterans have made for our nation. Now, while I have the attention of all the students and faculty here, Mrs. Gowdy has asked me to tell you about an opportunity that you will have next week to help the soldiers of the 224th Engineer Battalion. It's called Feed the 224th Battalion. Food for the mind, food for the body. The concept here is we've got the Engineer Battalion that's in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. That's their mobilization site, and they're getting prepared to, to uh, ship overseas. Actually, ship is kind of a misnomer. Their vehicles are going to be by ship. They're going to fly. Once they get there, it's going to take a little while for the mail and everything else to catch up to them and the supplies and, and personal items that they've packed may have run out. And so you have an opportunity all next week to take into your second hour classes different items that you would like to have shipped to a soldier that's over there. Now some of you may know, you may have friends or family that's in the 224, so this would be pretty easy for you. For those of you who don't know anybody from the 224, I'll just tell you from a personal perspective that this stuff really means a lot to the soldiers. The things that I got, and I wasn't going to talk about Iraq, but the things that I got when I was over there uh, from people that I really didn't know and from those that I did know uh, really meant a lot to me. You know, the first package that I got in Iraq, ironically, came from uh, a dentist in my church. And guess what I got? Yeah, I got, I got toothbrushes and toothpaste. And you think, boy, you know, hey, go figure, it's from a dentist. I'm telling you, I needed it. I was down to my last little squeeze on that toothpaste, and I needed that. I got lots of things, and so did the other soldiers from, from community members, from families and friends, and it really does make a, make a difference. So, you know, you can bring in books or magazines. You can bring in uh, DVDs, crossword puzzles. Uh, anything that you can think of that might make it a little bit easier over there. You can bring things like toothpaste and, and toothbrushes or uh, shaving cream or razor blades and that kind of thing. You could bring, uh, I know I enjoy getting Twinkies, and I'm not suggesting that you send them to Twinkies. Okay? But remember there are things that, you know, uh, that they would enjoy. I know that they'll have some microwaves over there, so things that can be uh, cooked in a microwave. Um, it's an Easy Mac. We ate a lot of Easy Mac. <laughs> I'm not saying that the food wasn't great over there, but uh, it was nice to have some, some things from home. So you have the opportunity, students and faculty, bring the stuff in, uh, in your second hour classes. At the end of the week, they'll be collecting all this, and the family readiness group from the 224th will be uh, making sure that their soldiers get those when they get over there. All right, enough of that. Okay, it's been my great pleasure, and I really mean that. It has been my great pleasure and privilege to speak to you today. God bless America. God bless those who answer the call. God bless those who will be answering the call. And God bless each and every one of you. Thank you.
stand. over our troops in Iraq and Afghanistan and all around the world who are serving the cause of freedom, who are protecting our rights and privileges and spreading democracy. And we thank you today, Father, for the privilege that we've had once again of celebrating today. And we pray that you'll help us to remember our veterans and our troops currently serving the 224th as they prepare to go overseas not only today, but in the days ahead, that they would know they are not forgotten. In the name of Jesus, we pray, as we ask you to bless America once again. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I have a couple of announcements before we close. Uh, the VFW and American Legion have asked me to announce that the annual Veterans Day dinner will be held at the VFW American Legion building at 6 p.m. today. All veterans, VFW and American Legion members, their families and guests are invited. The American Legion Post 47 will provide the meat and drinks. All attending are asked to bring a covered dish and their own table service. In closing, we would like to express our appreciation to the Fairfield High School staff, Mr. Jim Edgerton, who is still behind the flag, <laughs> Mrs. Linda Mitcheltree, the Fairfield High School Chamber Choir, also the Torch Club for helping us with the seating. Thank you to Jan Hunterdoss, who shared her wonderful, wonderful voice with us for all these events. Thanks to Ron Prill, who always helps with the planning for this event. Thanks to Dave Pesch and the mem members of the Veterans Day Planning Committee. We especially want to thank the young ladies and gentlemen of the Fairfield High School student body for joining with us today to honor our nation's veteran. I would like to give them a hand. If you would like a brochure explaining the proposed Veterans Memorial that is uh, planned to be constructed on the southwest corner of the courthouse lawn. There are some brochures out in the lobby. Help yourself. And uh, I think we're ready for uh, Mr. Voorhees for the dismissal. Students, 
In closing, I would also like to say that um, you are very, very fortunate. We are very, very fortunate to live in, in a country that defends your rights and that gives you the opportunity to be the person that you want to be. And I want to remind you to keep that spirit alive. And we're so very fortunate that we have all of you and you all bring something different. And that's the beauty of having a nation that allows that. Also, I would like to say how very, very proud I am of you. In every event, and as Mr. Bush has said, for the 224th, for this, for the Wall of Honor, I get always wonderful comments about the students at Fairfield High School. This is the seventh school that I've been associated with, and I can honestly say that it is definitely the greatest. And again, I applaud you. Now, I would like for our guests, please, to remain seated, and students, let's get back to class. We don't have much time to learn.